And now the news. And this just in from Kira Knightley. She says she's disappointed, but she understands. <laughs> um, anyway, on with road safety news. Some Swiss researchers at a university have found that young men drive faster when they hear masculine words. Some particularly dangerous words they've identified are muscle and beard. What? So they, they drive faster when they hear those words? Yeah, when they hear the word beard. But the interesting thing is... the no, hold on a minute. Are you suggesting that if I see him coming the other way, I will speed up? Yes. <laughs> it's a beard. It is a oh. beard. You will speed up by one mile an hour. But the converse is true, because they slow down again if they hear feminine words such as pink and lipstick. If I hear the word lipstick, I just assume my dog's got excited again. <laughs> I have to say, though, Hammond, this would be brilliant, because, you know, when next time he gives us a lift and we want him to speed up, i.e. always, we just have to sit in the back shouting manly words at him. What? So just shout... Power drill. Work boots. <laughs> <laughs> They could lose him his licence, cos wait until he's just coming up to a speed camera, lean over and just whisper, big pliers. James May just in a fluster. And then when we wanted to slow down, we just have to use feminine words. Pink. Fluffy. Joking apart, though, I think this is actually quite interesting. If you I've actually said bra, you'd screech to a halt immediately. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that maybe the reason why I always tend to drive a bit too slowly is that I'm always thinking about the John Lewis kitchen department. <laughs> Hey, now, listen, last week we went to uh, Botswana. Uh, I, hope you, uh, I hope you saw it. And the idea of the story was that we were saying you don't need a four-wheel drive car to drive off-road and you'd be amazed how long an old car can be kept going even when you think it's dead. Unfortunately, it became um, really a love story. Um, it was the story, really, of a young man who went out there <laughs> to Africa and he... Hang on a minute. What? Because I think we can improve this with an old Top Gear prop. Hold on. What old Top Gear prop? Well, just hang on, I'll find it. You well, you're an old Top Gear prop, have you? <laughs> oh, no, that. No, honestly, this will improve it immensely. <laughs> I'll start again. Would you? Yeah, hang on. Yeah. Wait, wait for it, right. Okay. So, it's the story, really, of a young chap. <laughs> who went to Africa <laughs> and fell in love with a, with a 43 year old Opal cadet who he called Oliver. <laughs> and they would sit for many hours under the stars telling each other they had eyes like pools of moonlight. And now he's decided to ship him back... I've said Hang him. Eat. Ship eat back to England, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, I have. He's coming home. Are you going to live in the country together and, you know, like, embroider church kneelers? Are you sure this isn't just, you know, the typical holiday romance? You'll get him home. <laughs> <laughs> when you were out there, you thought you had a lovely moustache. You'll get him home and he'll be horrid. Richard, he only wants a British passport. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or an MOT. Listen, it's real. He loves me and he's coming home. That's a fact. It just is out. I'm Don't... going to be sick. <laughs> Look at him. There he is. <laughs> Missing him. Now. He's on a boat right now as we speak. I know. No, you're not offloading. Bristol. <laughs> mm. I don't know when. Oh, <laughs> anyway, let's move it on, shall we? <laughs> Go on. Um, yes, now you may remember the first programme of this series when we went uh, over to Europe and drove all around the place trying to find fab fabulous driving roads in those lightweight supercars. Mm. Um, well, we heard from a chap who did the same. I and mean, we'd said, look, do it, it's brilliant. Well, a chap did, and he sent us his holiday photographs. He sent us a photograph here of him on the first day of his trip at the Stelvio Pass, where we actually were, with his Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. And he also then sent us a photograph of how it ended up on his holiday. Here it is. Mm. Not, not, not... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The thoughts he's having about Top Gear now. <laughs> Not generous. Not good. Now, the, uh, the police in Hampshire uh, are running an advert of a jolly policeman in his tall helmet and they're putting it on the back of a bus. We've got it here. There you are. It's fine, except for where the bus's exhaust pipe is. <laughs> oh, 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 there's his... No, that... <laughs> Imagine driving behind that. Look, look, there's me, there's my small metal penis. <laughs> <laughs> he will be the crossest policeman in the world. If you get pulled by him, it's bad news. It is. I mean, if you do get pulled by him for speeding, don't whatever you do say, aren't you the one for the exhaust pipe for a pig? <laughs> <laughs> hey, now, listen, you know you two, OK? You know London well enough. Yeah. Name for me what you think is the traditional London minicab. Minicab. What car? Mm. No. Toyota Camry. Nissan Primera. Yeah. Hyundai Sonata. No, yeah, you're wrong. You're, oh, God, where are my glasses? Not again. <laughs> Here we go. Somebody has compiled, OK, a list of minicabs uh, registered in London. I've got them here, OK. 17 of them are Bentley Continental GTs. 
Six. Three are Maybachs, the big ones, the 62s, and there are eight two-seater Merck SLs. Mini. Do you want to know why? Yes. Because if you register your car as a minicab, you don't have to pay the congestion charge. But, yeah, but hang on. How much does it cost to register your car as a minicab? Well, OK, congestion charge, eight quid a day, yeah. and that's going up, but it's eight quid a day now, so that's 40 quid a week. It costs uh, £27 a year to register as a minicab <laughs> and, and, and with a one-off application uh, fee of £82. But hang on, you don't actually have actually have to use your car as a minicab. Well, I mean, if they're going to come round, they're going to say, are you a minicab driver? Oh, yeah. Well, we're going to test you. Do you know where you're going? No. Oh, well, where you are, then. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to have, like, a pool of sick and a beaded seat cover in the car to <laughs> qualify as a minicab? I hope not, because uh, first thing tomorrow morning, they're getting uh, an application for a Lamborghini Gallardo Spider <laughs> minicab. <laughs> I look forward to falling out Isn't of a that... kebab shop and vomiting in it. That's <laughs> what I was going to say. No, I vomited in it just now, so it's very appropriate. <laughs> um, briefly, to talk about... Oh, yes, car. yeah, no, this is a good one now. Mitsubishi, you know Mitsubishi, makers of the Evo and all that. They've mm -hmm. now introduced a new turbocharged mid-engine car. Yeah. Do you want to see it? Yeah. There it is. It's called the iCar. <laughs> <laughs> no, hold on. No, because, OK, it, it might be ugly, but at least it's slow. <laughs> 64 brake horsepower, but it's got some clever bits and pieces. They say it's got a, a special filter on the air conditioning that, and, and I quote, they say, is of major benefit to allergy sufferers. I'm allergic to Bill Oddie. Will it stop him getting in? <laughs> Bill Oddie cannot be blown through the air vents at you. The filter gets rid of Like it. it. No, it's very clear. It's, got, it's also got hypoallergenic seats in What, they give you eczema? No. Chlamydia? No, they... <laughs> no, they, they, they stop your expert. And it's got a deodorising roof lining up there. No, I, I, I know about that. No, I was reading about that the other day. If you um, break wind... For instance. ..in that car... Yes. ..the smells are absorbed it's... into the roof lining. It's a well, trick, it's honestly. De it's deodorising, that's what it does. So, basically, the seats absorb your eczema and the roof lining absorbs your farts, which, <laughs> which is very clever. But you wouldn't want to buy one second hand, would you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, it's now time to move on. And for me to, uh, to drive a car, it's called the Caparo T1, and it's possibly the most amazing, maybe the fastest, and almost certainly the scariest car ever made.